Welcome and thank you for viewing this quick technical demonstration of the new vCenter Infrastructure Navigator. It is a feature of the vCenter Operations Suite. VMware vCenter Infrastructure Navigator is an automated application discovery and dependency mapping solution, which runs within the vSphere web client introduced in vSphere version 5.0, giving users GUI flexibility and data extensibility capabilities. vCenter Infrastructure Navigator seamlessly blends into the VC web client interface by adding a Navigator portlet to give application summary information and the Navigator tab as a plugin. This demonstration will show the value of application visibility for VM and enterprise management, covering the following use cases. For change management, really understanding the potential impact of change before you make it, like installing a patch. What VMs could be affected and how does a single VM serve multiple applications or services? Using version control to ensure all components of an application are running at the same approved versions. For better triage in applications and business service issues and problem trends with application mapping as part of the vCenter Operations Suite, understand how performance degradation affects applications and services. And finally, backup and recovery. Ensure that all components are included into a recovery plan. So let's begin the demonstration. As you see in this particular screenshot, two portlets shown right now. So the details of your entire data center within your vSphere environment, indicating both the virtual machines and hosts within the environment, as well as the new navigator portlet, showing all the mapped or discovered applications within your environment. So discovered application servers, broken down by which application servers and the number of those application servers within your environment. Same with web servers, database servers, mail servers, and so on. Next I'll show you a cluster, an application cluster within vSphere. By clicking on this particular cluster we see some sum summary information uh, within the cluster. Uh, as you notice, the Navigator portlet is integrated within this view of vCenter, uh, as well uh, as other information pertaining to this particular cluster. Next, I can show you information uh, on storage. Again, the Navigator tab showing specific information to the discovered applications. I'll drill into actual an actual LUN within the storage environment. Again, Navigator shows you what different applications are on that LUN. We can do the same with network information. Drilling down. To, the specific, to a specific network. Then back to our data center homepage, I will lead over to the integrated navigator tab. Now this is interesting because now you can see which applications are actually discovered. And this again is cross-reference to the knowledge base built into vCenter infrastructure navigator allowing you to see the virtual machine name associated with the service of the application running on the virtual machine. So very powerful technology to be able to allow you to have more visibility into what is running on each virtual machine, giving you the ability to build out uh, protection groups and recovery plans. As you can see, a number of these VMs are associated with that. And that helps things like disaster recovery, high availability, uh, particularly with working with uh, associated VMware product such as Site Recovery Manager or VMware SRM. Next, I'll show you how you can actually filter within your inventory of applications to get down to understand which 
uh, finding which applications run on which virtual machines. For example, I'll type in Exchange 2010. This pulls up all your virtualized Exchange servers within your virtual center. So you can quickly identify which services are running where and which virtual machines are running those services. Next, I'm going to type in IIS. So this is a good scenario. For example, I want to list all my IIS servers that are virtualized. I want to maybe drill in or identify those that are not current. So for example, maybe I can identify the IIS servers that are not up to the current version of 7.5, for example, 6.0 IIS servers. So it easily helps me find where those servers are and how I can identify which virtual machines they're run, running on. So let's drill into this particular IIS server. And I'm actually going to pull up the detailed information of the IIS server. And I'm going to even further drill in and show the dependencies. So this shows the power of the tool again with the ability to show the entire three tier application, everything from the SharePoint application running on the IIS server supported by the SQL database. And you can see the dependencies uh, supported throughout the, the mapping. I'm going to drill into a, a group called the LifeRay cluster, and this is actually a protection group used by SRM and I'm going to show you a, a more complex seven tier or seven VM solution still a three tier app but made up of uh, more complex seven virtual machines. I'm going to drill into that and you can see by the different tiers that I have uh, associated with different groups. So for example, this is associated with a group, a protection group called LifeWay Cluster, excuse me. I can also mouse over the actual dependency link and show you the port that that particular virtual machine is running on and the connection. So it allows you to drill into detail and understand more about the dependencies of these VMs within each other. You can also mouse over the these two virtual machines and see that they're actually uh, for this one it actually is part of a protection group but there is not actually configured and the same goes for this one so we have two issues here that we have two virtual machines within this three-tier cluster that actually are not part or not enabled in an, an SRM protection group so we are going to fix that I'm going to jump over to Site Recovery Manager, and I'm actually going to, and I notice a couple things. One, that there is a virtual machine on the LifeRay cluster that is not configured, and here's the virtual machine itself, which we identified earlier. I'm going to actually go ahead and right-click on this, and I'm going to configure this particular virtual machine for that protection group. I'm going to hit OK. and now it is configured for that protection group. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at and edit the protection group. And I'm going to enable this virtual machine as part of the LifeRay cluster. Let me go ahead and finish that. as you can see that it successfully did that. Next, I'm going to look at my recovery plan. I'm going to click on the database virtual machine that we saw, and we're going to actually prioritize this. So it's, there is a dependency and there is a prioritization of which machines are, which virtual machines are ranked in order of importance. So this helps you rank the how virtual machines uh, should be backed up in priority. So we're going to actually set a priority for this database server to priority one.
and I'm going to jump back to my navigator tab and I'm going to refresh. So I'm going to show you two things. We were able to both add uh, this virtual machine to the uh, LifeRay cluster. We were able to enable this one as well. And this database is uh, virtual machine has a higher ranking of importance. So that was a quick technical overview. Thank you for attending this demonstration on VMware vCenter Infrastructure Navigator, part of the vCenter Operation Suite of Management Solutions.